All right, uh, thanks for watching today. Um, I wanted to share with you a case that I thought uh, was interesting. Uh, it's quite simple and forward. It was a case in our fast tracked area of an occult foreign body. And hopefully this is a technique that you can use uh, coming up on your next shift if needed. So a patient had been sewing the day before uh, when she dropped a needle. Unfortunately, she was unable to find that needle in her shag carpet. So the day of the encounter, she had been sewing again and had, was sitting under her sewing table. When she went to get up, she slid her foot laterally and um, developed significant acute pain in her right foot uh, on the lateral side uh, with a sharp sting and it hurt every time she put pressure on it. Um, additionally, she said she found this broken off needle in the carpet that night and she brings in a sample needle of the needle she was sewing for, with uh, the day before and the one she had dropped. So, how would you find this foreign body? You know, there's a lot of ways to be able to do that. Obviously, X-ray and CT can identify it, but they're not going to lead to extraction. Fluoroscopy could identify, locate, and can guide you to extraction. Um, and that's probably what's used in the OR in this situation. Unfortunately, uh, we do not have that in the emergency department available to us. Uh, definitely do not do an MRI. Um, that would be a quite a painful way to extract that needle probably not very safe um, and ultrasound can obviously identify locate and can guide your needle extra extraction here so this is what her foot looked like she said she hadn't had any bleeding she couldn't identify a source of pain but she indicated to me that this area right here it was kind of her main pain area whenever she would put pressure on it to step it would hurt if she touched the area it felt very sensitive and so I took as close as look as I could asked her about it and she said she never even saw a drop of blood she had no idea if she actually had the needle in there or not um, so i decided to use the ultrasound to see and look or see if it was still there um, before i went to x-ray or anything else so the probe i chose was a high frequency linear probe um, the higher the frequency the better because we're going to be dealing with superficial structures and i just started scanning over the area and, and looking for foreign body now you can scan the contralateral side and get an idea of what the patient's normal anatomy was like. In this case, uh, that was not needed. We were able to identify quite easily uh, this foreign body, this hyperechoic structure with ring down artifact overlying the distal metatarsal of her fifth digit on that right foot. And then here we're going to see another video. We're in plane better now. And we're just kind of seeing where the tip of that needle lies. And, and unfortunately, it was lying just over the dorsal portion of that fifth metatarsal. Um, in that region so the needle the the um, tools that I like to use for this are an 18 gauge needle some forceps usually the smallest you can find but that are strong and then I like a, an 11 blade needle myself uh, you could use or I mean 11 blade um, scalpel and um, so what you want to do is you want to identify that in plane. And once you have, then you're going to inject this area with lidocaine. I like lidocaine with epi. You could do any anesthetic you prefer, but lidocaine with epi to hopefully decrease the amount of bleeding in that, in that region. Then you're going to take that 18 gauge needle after you've numbed it up and you're going to go in that area and you're going to drive it down. And you're going to drive it down until you feel watching your screen and looking for the, uh, the, finder needle um, to locate your foreign body. So here's what we see. So we see the foreign body here. It's ringed down here. It's sitting over the distal metatarsal. And here's our, we see our finder needle coming in. There's not a lot of room to work with. I mean, we're less than a centimeter deep and we're coming in at this angle and we're going to go in bevel up uh, is what I like to do. I like to bevel up because then I can kind of set it rested on um, any sharp points. Um, or blunt ends and then it kind of rests up against it without um, being released from it. So once you find that and you, you get it in that position about like that, we're going to leave the needle in place and we're just going to take our hands off the probe and we're going to take our hands off the needle so the needle doesn't move. And then we're going to end up with something like this. This will be our finder, finder needle and we're going to stabilize it with our non-dominant hand. And then we're going to take our 11 blade scalpel and we're going to put it right on the back side of this needle and we're going to go down and cut down through the skin till we hit the foreign body 
um, or at least to get through the dermal layers enough to function. In this case, we, we uh, were ended up with about a little under a centimeter laceration on this lateral side of her foot. And this is after the procedure, so it's a little more bloody, but this is what we were able to work through was this tiny little laceration right there. And is what we ended up with was finding the foreign body and then we take our forceps, drive them down through that wound. And that's why I like the small ones is to fit through that small uh, laceration. And what I like to do is I like to take the forceps closed initially, come down, make sure I'm in plane and tap the end of the foreign body. Then I'm gonna draw it back just a hair. So drop back and then I'm gonna open up my forceps in advance. So if you see here, you can see the um, one jaw of the forceps here and one jaw of the forceps here. And they're gonna clasp the needle that was in this patient's foot and then we're gonna pull it out. And you wanna make sure you have good strong forceps that can hold it, grab a hold of that because obviously it's a smooth surface and it, you know, with the blood that's already on it or um, it's not gonna come out very easily which was the case in this situation. But we're able to grasp that and you see we're able to alter that. And then once you get a good grip on that, you're able to pull it out. Unfortunately, in this case, it took us a few tries to grab it well to pull it out, um, but we were able to remove the foreign body. And this is what it ended up looking like. So it was a two centimeter needle that was broken off. It was part of the needle she had seen before uh, in which we could not see the wound. Um, we chose, um, or I chose at that point to leave the wound open and let it drain and started her on some antibiotics just because we had to manipulate the tissue so much to get this out. Um, if you're able to what, do it fairly easy, you probably don't need the antibiotics, but that's up to you. I don't know that there's a standard of care right now for that. Um, but we are able to at least remove the, the foreign body, which is you know the nidus for further infection. I'd say either way, make sure you give your patient good return instructions. For infection, and for infection, regardless if you are um, starting on antibiotics or not, um, but this is a good, simple way. Hopefully, that uh, you're able to assist your next patient with an occult foreign body or an open wound with a foreign body that can't be identified by just searching the wound. So again, hopefully that's helpful. That and it's something that you can incorporate into your next clinical shift and taking care of your patients. I haven't had tons of cases of this. Um, but have had been, been able to identify uh, several foreign bodies and get them removed quite easily, very uh, non-invasively by doing this technique. Um, this was an idea that came to me uh, during my fellowship in which I saw a patient that uh, was limping and there was no identifiable source of his limp other than he didn't want to put any uh, pressure on his heel. Unfortunately, I did not ultrasound that. Um, an x-ray was negative, however, it ended up being a wood splinter that was in his foot that was about an inch long um, and unfortunately uh, I did miss that, that at that time but I knew his mother and she said the next day they could see the splinter poking out um, and were able to grab a hold of it and pull it out quite easily but unfortunately he went the next 24 hours or more without being able to walk on his foot well so that's this is the uh, I thought after that how would I address that and this is the, the solution I came up with Hopefully it's helpful to you in these occult foreign bodies, as I'm sure some of you will encounter at some point during your career. Uh, thanks for listening, um, and let me know if you have any questions or comments in, the, in your comments below, and I'll be happy to address them. Thanks. Bye.